a botanical garden in Gothenburg, Sweden. Autumn day, October day. And over there we got the herb garden and some kind of uh, modern art monument. I see no beauty in that one except for the, the top of it, perhaps. Terrible. <laughs> the leaves are falling, everything is falling now, but I found the colors to be great. Really smashing autumn leaves, reddish colors everywhere. There's a lot of beauty in that one. Ah, here it says sign herb garden. And yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah, all right. Yeah, let's enter. Leaves everywhere. Lots of some marguerites. <laughs> no, not really. Well, things aren't really going my way. <laughs> Dog refuses to walk. <laughs> so I better film on my own. Oh, the fountain. And yeah, not so interested. I guess we leave. Maybe he likes the bamboo shade better. <laughs> this is a lot lovelier sight, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Now when you're allowed to bring in your dog here to the park again only during the uh, the winter month and late autumn ah, as you all know the birds and everything laying eggs come on come on yeah come go down yeah don't look at me just come all right no you're not gonna get any candy for that it's a nice little valley here yeah, now we saw a little bit of our Swedish fauna and our landscape and what it looks like now in this northern hemisphere in the middle of October. So I guess we're heading home right now to watch and take a look at a few orchids perhaps. <laughs> and here's another quite neglected orchid, Kaisis rectusens about one or two years to blooming size, with white blooms with yellow center. Large pseudobulbs hanging regimes. Anyway, from curling orchidine. I believe it arrived bare-rooted for me, without any roots and only a new little growth coming out from the base. And the new little growth happened to be this one. It's now this size, as you can see. And I, I tried to give this one the mug treatment, as I call it, uh, to put it in a mug with a little bit of lecker beads to the bottom and some, just some water. Uh, yeah, down there. Hmm, yeah, but now I filled it up with a little bit too much water. I just didn't look properly. But <laughs> it's growing roots, like, yeah, really well. Not like crazy, but really well now, the last couple of weeks in this setup. It's a little bit more damp setup. Lekker setup. Yeah, as you can see, it can tolerate it. Never to forget that this one will be arching over like this, over the sides. I will show you my other one so you get a better picture of what I mean. Yeah, this Kaiser Slimming Hay from Swerter. One or two years ago I got this one. Uh, one and a half years ago. Look at its uh, pseudobulbs. They're really, yeah, arching over, yeah, hanging over the edges of the pot. So, if this one had been sitting in uh, semi-hydroponics, it would just, I think, move around and bubble around in the, in the lecca, so it wouldn't be stabilized enough, I think. So, this one is sitting in uh, coconut tusk chips, fiber chips, yeah. And it's a heavy feeder and a heavy drinker, so I gave that one water for a couple of days ago and it's, uh, yeah, it's bone dry now. So they drink a lot and they need a lot of fertilizer. But anyway, it needs a lot of water now and now it's suggested to be sending in quite a lot of uh, water. So what to do now? What other options do I have? Yeah, of course I've got a, 
sphagnum moss, but uh, the scale will, yeah, get into it. <laughs> Search your way down into sphagnum moss, of course, I love sphagnum moss. So what else? Um, it's going to be too dry as well, sphagnum moss. Um, so I came up with another solution as I reported, I just reported the uh, Stenhopia. I'm going to use rock wool for this guy in a hanging basket. Rock wool holds moisture quite a bit. And I'm going to show you another experiment. As I showed you um, about one week ago in my report or not report video from Swarta. Look, it's the Angrecum aloefolium, the one sitting on a mount. And yeah, I put this one into a little mug with holes in it and place the whole <laughs> mount uh, cork slab into yeah, into a little um, pot with rock wool. Ah, it's really damp. All the way up. All due to this little water at the reservoir down there. It's keeping... I mean, the, the water evaporation goes all the way up here, still. I haven't watered this guy for a couple of days now. And it's not rottening or anything. It's, uh, yeah, it's doing its thing and it looks great. Maybe it can work, yeah. Nice to try out different and new solutions for your little guys. So, let's just shift. And I'm not going to release the lecker here. I'm just going to get rid of the dead roots. Let's peel them off a bit, yeah. I kept the old roots, dead ones, in case of branching. Can happen, of course. Mm. Now, just place the whole bowl and the whole cluster here, and yeah, I can keep the lick, it doesn't matter. And it's growing in this direction, so. The new growth will come out here, so it's gonna, yeah, it's, it will be able to stay in this pot, in this basket for a couple of years, I believe. It's nice to have the same kind of pot for the same kind of orchid. This neighbor fellow, yes. Rock wall, simply rock wall. Maybe yeah, I can stake this one up. Just a little stake. Yeah. Yeah. Did it make a difference or not? Yeah, I did. It's okay. Little tag, little hanger, and we're all set. Let's hope for this one to like it in there. Yeah, yes, sir. Kaisers Brechtisms, the one with the white, lovely blooms. Let's give this fellow one a little bit of water, shall we? And I also did get. Last week, um, a request. <laughs> uh, well, I'm not sure if I'm going to call it a request, but well, um, a question in the comment section: whether my orchid, my Fabia, Cattleya Fabia, has been blooming yet, or is on its way of blooming. But I can tell you that he's not. This one I got for free as a free sample from um, Luke. Yeah, exactly one year ago in October last year, as a young plant. And since then it's been producing this huge pseudobulb. Yes. And this one, and a new one there. And it's sitting in bark media. Thirsty guy with a large root system now. Yeah, 
as long as it likes it in there and, and the part still fits, it can stay for a bit. And I see no point to transition it into semi-hydro or such, since it's doing great and is not infested by scale by any means. Yeah, I don't really like it. Maybe it's a bit too healthy for them. <laughs> anyway, I got yet another Cattleya Fabia. And if you didn't know it already, it's a, it's a cross between Doviana aurea and Cattleya labiada. So it's, two, it's a cross between two species, so it's a primary hybrid cross. This one is uh, even older, I believe. I got this one as a seedling, um, 2016, the summer of 2016. So it's, um, yeah, I've got it for more than five years now. And as you can see, <laughs> it's not really taller <laughs> than the, other, the one I got from uh, Look. So it's a more compact grower, slow grower from Orchid Garden. Yeah, that's a little update. And, well, perhaps the, the one to the left can bloom, will be able to bloom in a year or so. Yeah, little update. Yeah, and I also got a gift. Yeah, that's one of the advantages of being a member of an orchid society. I got a text, Facebook, from a girl in my orchid society, and she said, "Oh yeah, I've got a Kitlea maxima, a division, and here's the mother plant, a picture of the mother plant. She's been in bloom recently." Would you like to have a division? I can come and give it to you. I'm <laughs> just, well, what? I live in your neighborhood, so why not? And you're just, mm, all right. <laughs> of course, I can, uh, yeah. <laughs> I want to have that one. <laughs> I've been looking for a good-sized Maxima for a while, but I couldn't find it. But this one isn't either, but still, it's a good, dense division. And with a new growth here, and another new growth there. Yes, unfortunately the green root tip broke during transport, but and it's got no other roots. So I I will give this Cattleya maxima, the regular one, variety. <laughs> I shall say the mug treatment. I'm gonna put her in some damp lecker beads. Yeah, and just put her in a uh, in a container for a bit to yeah to lure out the little new roots, perhaps. She seems to be that kind of grower that uh, put out her new uh, roots after uh, having matured her last newest growth, I think, I believe. But I don't know, I'm not sure, but it looks that way, so. But anyway, thank you so much, Alex, for this one. And I really do hope that I see you at the next meeting, or Orca Society meeting, in late October. It's going to be our first, if we're lucky, our first physical meeting for almost one and a half years now. So it's going to be great to perhaps see each other again. And you as well, of course. <laughs> and I still have a few more things to show you that I've been thinking about lately. And um, this is a look and purchase one year ago, for being exact, BLC Suzuki's Red Flare Suzuki. Uh, this one, I believe, had the nicest blooms of them all from that order, from Lucke. And as you saw, I put it into semi-hydro after a while. I don't know if you remember, but I but I um, reported this one into Bark Media in a hanging Cattleya basket at first. So it's been uh, quite recently... Um, transition into uh, semi-hydro but uh, well it's doing great but yeah you all wonder I guess yeah it's not a secret but it's been through a lot some patches to the leaves just about everywhere yeah and you all know where the patches come from scale attack yeah you can all see a little bit shiny Display on this one's leaves, can't you? Yeah. Uh, I prepared this one with some leaf shine, leaf gloss, spray. Nelson Garden, established 1933. It's a quite old brand. Bloglands leaf shine. <laughs> and it's in Finnish. <laughs> yeah, so I bet you don't understand that one either, but um, 
Let's see if we can see. It's Danish. And it says in... Uh, not English. All right. That's odd. <laughs> but anyway, leaf shine, as I call it, makes the, the leaves shinier and yeah, repels dust and stuff, as well as scale, as long as you keep the orchid in a damp environment such as this. I'm going to show you another one. An orchid sitting in bark instead, just to compare. As I told you, this one's base was totally, totally covered and invaded by scale. I had such a hard time when it was sitting in bark. This one, yay, she's in bloom even. LC Elegance, a really, really good grower. Yeah, now you can see her properly. She's becoming a tall one. I got this one as a seedling six years ago. A really, really tiny one, like this, about this high. Seedling, as I say. Purple Rod Across, a really lovely one. Best scent I have tasted. Yeah, I know I'm repeating myself, but it cannot be repeated far too many times. But anyway, I'm not going to show you the blooms, but I will show you my concern. Can you see down there at the base of the pseudobulbs, whitish stuff, unwanted stuff as well, a little bit up on the pseudobulb. Yes, scale lurking. Yeah, not much to the newest one. This is covered with sheath here. Yeah. I cannot really get to it yet. <laughs> oh, yay. I discovered a bit more down there. Do you know why? This one is almost the only Cattleya I've got left sitting in bark. And the scale, they literally just uh, invade the, the one sitting in bark now. Since I got rid of it on almost all of the ones sitting in uh, semi-hydro now. And the stamp media, as I told you. Yeah, they're only on the ones sitting in bark. So that draws me to a conclusion that scale doesn't really like damp media and damp environment. Yeah, this one, my, as I always say in my Bloom and Spike videos, since this one seemed to be bloom, in blooming stage all of the time, Brassia Shilop Token. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It really isn't. Thank you, Michael, for the enlightenment, <laughs> shall we say, to clear this one out. Uh, it was misenabled and it said Brescia Shiloh Token on its, uh, the pot it arrived in and I repotted it into a new one. So, well, I cannot, well, perhaps I can show you the, uh, the text, the label, if I can find it. But anyway, it is. <laughs> Bretonia, nowadays called Bretonia Shiloh Golden Spider. Yes, uh, not Shiloh Tolkien, the one with the pink skirt. I was confused. I thought it was two different varieties with the same name. <laughs> yeah, it can happen. Yeah, everything can happen. Or shall we say anything can happen in the orchid world. So, uh, well, I didn't look into it all that much. So, thank you, Michael. And now you know, it's Golden Spider. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And hope you will join me in my next video. Take care until we see each other next time. And talk to you soon, guys. Bye-bye.